Hello everyone. Um, <laughs> long time no see. Again, I don't really have an explanation apart from um, I moved house like twice. I had moved away from the place I was living to a completely different part of the country. Started a new job. Lots of things have been happening. Um, and this this hasn't so sorry about that um but who knows maybe i'll get back to it and it'll actually you know i'll, I'll do it again i can't i can't say <laughs> but i'll try so despite the fact that i had a little bit of a weird um year last year in terms of reading in terms of many things um i still have some books that i would class as the best books that i read last year um, and I want to talk about them because they're really great and most of them I've talked about before, um, some of them I have not talked about yet um, so I just want just to wanna discuss it and you know hopefully bring on some better reading this year um, because for quite a while now it's sort of felt like I've been reading books that are like good and I like them but I haven't like really really loved a book or it's been it's been very rare that i've like really been like fallen in love with a book for a long time and some of these most of these kind of broke through that sort of you know um barrier and made me really really love them so i'm going to talk about them i have a top 11 for no particular reason that's just the the ones that i looked through like the books that i'd read last year and i thought they were good um, also, I'm not going to rank them. I'm just going to go in order chronologically that I read them because I don't want to rank them. I don't want to put them against each other because they're all very different and it would feel wrong. So the first book is Assembly by Natasha Brown, which I actually read for uni, which feels like a lifetime ago now um, that I read this and that I was studying it. Um, but yeah, I, I wrote an essay on this book because it really, it's really, really like, remarkable to be honest. It starts off with a young woman who is heading to um, her boyfriend's parents house in the country. They're very like rich and well off and they have a big old house and they're gonna have a big like family gathering party thing and she is heading there but she has just had some bad news and she is just um, she's having to try and um, make a decision. Um, so essentially you get her thought process um, from the point where she's sort of preparing to leave um, and up to the point where she's at the party. And what's great about this is the way that you get into the character's head and you really feel like you are feeling her feelings and thinking her thoughts. Um, and also there's so much about like British colonialism, um, racism, like um, class, loneliness, so many things in here. I really just thought it was brilliant. Then something totally different is um, the second Mistborn trilogy by Brandon Sanderson um, which I read the entire three books last year I'm counting them as kind of one because I I like the I liked the, the the trilogy as a whole this is the second one Shadows of Self essentially the first one and this one as well um, it kind of goes a bit of a different track in the third one but they're sort of like mystery books but with a sort of steampunk fantasy setting and I just really loved them. They were very comforting um, when I was doing my final like essays and stuff for uni and I I just love Brandon Sanderson's writing. His like world building is wonderful. I think it's just really well done stories, well written fantasy with brilliant characters and brilliant world. Um, yeah, I just love them. Then we have um, Great Circle by Maggie Shipstead. Um, this is a book that I've been meaning to read for a long time and finally got around to last year. Um, again, in the sort of period where I was coming out of my um, university, like final essays and everything. And it, it's honestly, this book is so wonderful. Um, it's about a um, fictional pilot um, who lived in the like 20s and 30s. Um, and she circumnavigates the world and then disappears. Um, but you also follow um, a timeline of 
um, a film being made about her life in the present day. Um, and you follow mainly the woman who is playing um, the pilot, Marion. It reminds me of a kind of classic where the story is just brilliant. The writing is kind of not anything particularly like flowery or like experimental necessary, but it's just just joyous to read. You get so many different um, characters that you get to know really well and the historical settings are so vivid. It's just, it's just lovely and made me really sad, um, but also just filled me with a lot of like, just love. I don't know, it's, it's very, it feels like eating like a very substantial meal because <laughs> it's just like, it just filled me up with like good hearty bookness. <laughs> I don't know, it's just good. Then we have The Colony by Audrey McGee. Um, this was longlisted for the Booker Prize last year um, and I read it before it was longlisted um, and was rooting for it to be shortlisted, but it was not. Um, this is about a an island off the coast of Ireland um, and primarily about two men that go to live there. One of them's English, one of them's French. Um, well, they go to live there temporarily and they kind of, they're both in their own ways sort of exploiting the island and its people. Um, and this is all happening alongside the um, sort of beginnings of the Troubles and it is so beautiful. <laughs> Not very much happens but you again get to know the ca characters and the setting really closely. Um, there's a lot of interesting things about um, like the Irish language and colonialism and um, that's something, the subject kind of subject I'm interested in anyway, so I enjoyed reading about that. And yeah, I think my favourite thing is just the way that the writing slips between um, like sort of standard third person narration um, in and out of um, people's thoughts. And I, I don't know, it's just gorgeous um, and I love it very much. Next is Build Your House Around My Body by Violet Cooper Smith, which is about many things, but it starts off with a um, Vietnamese American woman who has um, not been living in Saigon for very long um, before she goes missing. Um, and then you also get um, a, a bunch of other seemingly not connected um, story lines um, and sort of snapshots of little moments, most of them very creepy, um, some of them could kind of be like standalone ghost stories, um, except then they all sort of begin to come together. Um, and the way that that happens, where you sort of realise how these things are linked and what's going on, um, is gorgeous and so fascinating. Um, it's also incredibly atmospheric, um, wonderfully, wonderfully creepy, and, um, yeah, but also about a a woman who's very lonely and doesn't know what she's doing with herself and is very uncertain of herself. Um, and yeah, I think it it's just one of those stories where just the process of reading it and the way that it it takes you along this sort of journey um, of not really knowing what's going on, but enjoying all the creepiness and the, and then gradually re figure out figure out what's going on and then kind of coalescing into this story about a um well a story that you didn't even realize was what you were reading um and it's it's just it's just so beautiful and excellent and I really really want to reread it very soon next is Animalia by Jean-Baptiste Alamo um translated by um Frank Wynne from French um this is one of the most disgusting books I have ever read and I loved it. Um, so essentially this, this starts off um, at the beginning of the 20th century with a family of um, farmers um, in France and it follows them kind of through the First World War and yeah sort of just not much happens. You kind of get to know a few characters, get some gorgeous descriptions of um, landscape and some horrendous descriptions of war and farming and other 
gross things that happen. Um, and then the second half is about their descendants um, and who have essentially created this massive pig factory business um, that is spiraling out of control, everything's going wrong and it's essentially about these characters um, trying to bring back control um, over nature and over each other. Like I said, the, <laughs> it's so disgusting. Um, there's a lot of there's a lot of pig shit. There's a lot of pig vulvas um, and general bodies. A lot of animal cruelty, but. The way that the scenes are described in here is so beautiful. Even if it's something disgusting happening, it's still described in a way that you're like, that is stunning and so incredibly like visceral. And the ways that it explores how people try and exert control over each other and over the natural world and over animals is just, it's so fascinating and I, read this really slowly because I was just trying to like savour it. It's it's wonderful. It's not wonderful, it's disgusting, but it's brilliant. <laughs> the next two are also translated books. Um, first is Our Lady of the Nile by Scholastic Mikusongo, um, translated by Melanie Mortner. Um, is that right? Yes. So this is about a group of girls at a school in Rwanda at the end of the 70s. It follows these girls as they sort of tell various stories um, and you see that they're kind of the, the dynamics of the school and of the, the relationships between the girls kind of becomes a sort of microcosm of um, the like political situation in Rwanda at the time um, and this is such a unique book the characters aren't really they don't feel like real people which is normally what I want from a book but in this it's more like they are storytellers and they are exploring the like I said the political situation and it all it all very obviously feels like an allegory but that's but not in a way that is heavy-handed in a way that is like just very just makes you so invested in the people and the like gorgeous like landscape and culture that is described i i don't know it's just it's brilliant and i think more people should read it then we have elena knows by claudia pinheiro translated by francis riddle um this was long listed for the international book of last year um and shortlisted i believe um yeah and it's one of i think it, it's one of the only ones that i've read um from the long list actually last year even though i have several more that are waiting to be read. This is about a woman called Elena um, whose daughter has been found dead in a local church um, and everyone around Elena is telling her that her daughter killed herself but Elena knows that it was a murder and that um, her daughter would not have done this um, and that what the story that everyone around her is telling her is not the truth. Um, or is it? Um, so essentially she's like, she goes on this sort of journey to try and prove that it's not the truth. But because she has Parkinson's, she needs some help. So she goes to find um, a person who owes her and her daughter a favour. Um, and this is excellent because of, again, the way that you get into Elena's head is so masterfully done you feel her pain, you get to know all of the ways that her body works and the ways that her body betrays her um, and how how her sense of time and um, everything really is affected by um, her disease and her illness and it's it's just fascinating but it's also about mothers and daughters um, and how well you can really know somebody. Um, it's just brilliant. I read it almost entirely in one go um, because it's, as well as being so like fascinating and introspective, it was also really, really 
like I just really wanted to know what happened it's really compulsive and um not compulsive compelling that's what I meant so the last three books are books that I have not talked about on my channel because I read them um since well I read them in the last like three-ish months of the year um and the first one is Wolf Hall by Hilary Mantel um this is a book that I knew I was gonna love because I just knew it's historical fiction it's it's brilliant obviously um so I don't have that much to say about it because everything that I've said I can say about it has already been said better by other people if you don't know this is about a it's about the court of Henry VIII but it follows um Thomas Cromwell um and his sort of life and the kind of rise to power um and I think what I loved about this was how just unique the writing style is um and how it really gets you into the world but also is it's quite like um opaque at times so you're not but you always feel the feelings um I don't know I just had the best time with this it's one of the best books I've ever read then we have Love After Love by Ingrid Pissode. Um, I read this on, well, I listened to this on audio. Um, this is about a family in um, Trinidad, I believe, um, and mostly a mother-son relationship. Um, and I don't want to say too much more than that because not much happens in this book. But what I loved about this is just... I don't know I got I just got so attached to the characters and their story um it's so wonderfully told where everything is I just feel like I'm repeating myself saying that the characters are really well done and really vivid and it's just it just made me cry I don't know <laughs> it was just one of those books where I loved all of the characters so much I just didn't want anything bad to happen to them and I was there with them for all of the sadnesses, all of the happiness. Being in inside the characters' heads when you love them and you you kind of feel them suffering, it was, oh my god, it was so much fun. I love this book, it's delightful and heartbreaking and gorgeous. And lastly we have maybe my favourite book of the year maybe tied with Wolf Hall. It feels mean to the other books to say that I love these two the most, but I love this book. It's Tiffing the Velvet by Sarah Waters. Um, so I have been meaning to read Sarah Waters for ages. I knew that I would love her books, especially this one, because it's literally, it's so many things that I love. It is historical fiction set in, well, I think, yeah, late 19th century London. It is um about sapphic women it is about theater it is so good <laughs> this is one of the books that really just i think pushed through and reminded me of what it feels like to fall in love with a book see this is about a sort of young woman who moves um well she sees um a another young woman performing in a music hall um doing a kind of, well, an act where she dresses up in a suit and sings men's songs. Um, and essentially she falls in love with her and then kind of goes to London to be her dresser. And from there, it goes, it goes a bit wild. Like so much stuff happens. I have now f utterly fallen in love with Sarah Waters writing. Like her, I don't know what it is. To be fair, it reminds me of Great Circle. And I think I love them for the same reason in that it's just a good story with good characters you can just really sink your teeth into and I don't know there's just the way she has of describing things just seems so effortless but so beautiful um I've also in the last month I've also read The Paying Guests um which I didn't love quite as much but it still has that kind of just that that style that is so stunning and I love it I love it so much and now I can't wait to just read everything she's ever written
um, and loved more. So that's it, my top 11 books. Um, I think, I hope I've counted them right, otherwise that'll be embarrassing. Um, yeah, thank you so much for watching um, and for sticking around. Um, I really appreciate it. Um, yeah, hopefully, <laughs> I s I've said this every time I've, you know, come back after a long leave of absence. Um, hopefully I will be back soon with more videos, but I can't promise anything. We'll just see what happens. We're, I'm, I'm, I'm doing it as and when, but now that I'm a bit more settled in my, you know, where I'm living and what I'm doing, hopefully I will be back on track. Um, although I have only read two books in January so far, so I might not have anything to talk about, but we'll see. Anyway, thank you very much for watching and I will hopefully see you soon.